agree with that? Yeah, without a doubt. I think it's going to be a fantastic match. It might not, possibly not have the drama of this afternoon, but I think it will have a step up in uh, cue ball control, maybe break building from these two players because they're both class acts at that. Are you expecting an aggressive match tonight? Ah. <laughs> uh. I'm expecting a class match. I think both these players are classy break builders and they play the game like everybody would like to play the game. I'd love to play like John Higgins or Mark Allen in today's game. And I'm sure that Stephen appreciates both their skills as well. You haven't got a clue what's going to happen. You never know what the storyline's going to be. <laughs> True. You can say that again after <laughs> yeah. what we saw this afternoon because Kyron Wilson, 5-2 down this afternoon. We thought he was dead and buried, roared back and knocked out Judd Trump 6-5. Judd started his own downfall with this missed rash plant that left Kyron with the opportunity to win the last frame. Kyron then had a bit of good luck when this cut on a tricky red just found its way to a position onto the pink to build his match-winning break. And by the time this double turned into a treble, Kyron was already past the winning post and through to his first final of a Triple Crown event. Well, I hope Judd wasn't watching because uh, this man said that defeat for Judd Trump is very, very damaging live on the BBC earlier. Would you agree? Yeah, I think he, he, he should be disappointed with what happened there today. Uh, and from Kyron Wilson's perspective, he was, he was offered a lifeline. Um, he must be very proud of himself to actually have taken it. Strong views from you earlier today. Mm. Have you, an hour and a half later, had time to contemplate what you said? Or are you uh, going to change your viewpoint in any way? No, not at all. Judd Trump had the match you know, done and dusted at 5-2. Play, played a shot that um, was a crazy shot, really. Um, offered his opponent a lifeline. And boy, did he take it. And Steve, you were commentating, and you probably heard the boy saying that Kyron Wilson could possibly go on and lift this wonderful title. Yeah, and I think you know something like that can be a, a fillip to your career. You know, uh, When it looks like you know, would lose a match, all of a sudden you're given that dog's chance, so to speak. Uh, that could be when you're writing the record books of a player, a, a very pivotal moment. Yeah. What was so special about the way Kyron fought back for you, the way he hung on in there? Because we were talking in studio earlier today, and the body language for us in the studio, we looked as if, and Kyron came in and said, well, actually, I felt good, but the body language didn't look good at all. What stood out for you today? When it mattered, under pressure, when he was uh, when he offered the balls, he never balked at the chance. So you, you, you know he's got a great temperament, and he's got the winning mentality. Given enough chances, giving enough balls on the table, he's going to take his chances and, and from Judd's perspective disappointment that he, he blew it and, and actually presented too many chances to his opponent right certainly hope he's not watching blew it and damaging for the rest of his career let's hope Judd Trump is not tuned in this evening and let's get back to tonight's matches John Higgins against Mark Allen let's join Rob Walker good evening ladies and gentlemen this is the very last session of snooker ahead of tomorrow's 2018 Daffabet Masters final it's been a week of shocks, upsets and comebacks. Which of these two Celtic giants will be joining Kyron Wilson in the showpiece showdown? It's time to find out. Please welcome one of the best break builders in the modern game, bidding for his first appearance in a Masters final. This three-time ranking event winner showed his class with a superb, nerveless 6-1 win over the defending champion, Ronnie O'Sullivan, in the quarterfinals. He, without doubt, is a big occasion performer who will relish this tonight. He's the pride of Northern Ireland. He's Mark the Pistol Allen. <laughs> And his opponent, one of the finest sportsmen Scotland has ever produced. Twice a Masters champion, bidding for his first final in 12 years. In a career of incredible longevity, he won his 29th ranking title earlier this season in India. A player of immense mental strength on and off the table. Four times a champion of the world, the Wizard of Wishaw, John Higgins.
A Saturday evening of entertainment we've got here at Alexander Palace. Just listen to the noise. Good evening to John our commentators, John Dougal and Ken Doherty. Tails. Good evening, Jason. Good evening, John Jason. Good John evening everybody. Well, it's cold outside, but boy, is it hot in the arena here at Thank Alexander you, Palace. So what a wonderful reception, and everybody looking forward to this, Ken. And the as Stephen Stephen said, John Higgins all to the break. makings of a classic semi-final. Yes, absolutely, John. What a reception both players got. Come on down upstairs. Wonderful. Absolutely buzzing in here. I think it is going to be a classic. There's not a lot between them, as you saw in the head-to-heads. Eight wins apiece. And I think, as the lads mentioned, that 6-1. Demolition of Ronnie O'Sullivan in the last round by Mark Three Allen. Lines, yeah. Give him all the confidence he needs, John, okay. to beat John Higgins tonight. Well, yes, and particularly as everybody was thinking that Ronnie was unbeatable at this venue. There you go. So that was a real feather in Mark's cap. But he's got another legend to take on here. Great start, from the perfect start. Mm, fantastic open and pot. And nicely on the black as well, can just play a little cannon into the red, just above the black. Mm, didn't play it that well. We still got a red to the right Eight. center. And I think the pink is on into the left corner pocket. Yes, yeah, lucky to have this as an alternative. Oh, but he's not made the most of it. Mark Allen, eight. A little bit of tension in the arm, probably first frame. Understandable. But it could be a costly miss. So close. One. Nice and straight on this pink. Doesn't have much to do with the cue ball. Two reds to the right of the pack. Pot into the... Bottom right hand corner pocket. I don't think the pink will spot on its own spot. Jan Bahassel will just so check now. Nice. No. So it goes directly in line with the spot and of course the top cushion. It sort of messes those two reds that would have been the bottom one certainly was on into the bottom right hand corner pockets blocking thank you pulling Seven. angle now for those two so you may have to go up for the blue here eight it is remarkable how john higgins has regained his focus for the game Normally say when you get over 40 that you start to lose that little bit of edge, but the last couple of seasons he's really come back to something like his best. Thirteen. Back up to number five in the world rankings. It really is a, a compliment to his desire and his love of the game. Yeah, 20, 29 ranking tournament wins. Yeah. I think one or two behind Ronnie O'Sullivan, and of course Stephen Hendry. I think he's got 32. So fantastic achievement so far, and still going. Yeah, needs a bit of luck here. Has he got it? Doesn't look like it. 21.
this red pot's up into the yellow pocket, but not easy. Oh, a great shot. Fantastic. 22. <laughs> Couldn't have played that much better. and playing that pink with a little bit of extra pace. He knew okay. this red was never going to be easy, but the closer he gets to the red, the easier it's going to be. Now it's choice. Looking at it, I think you'd probably play for the yellow here because this is the last of the loose reds. And in potting the 28. yellow, come off the side cushion to smash into that cluster of reds. Playing for the yellow, he doesn't have to do much with the cue ball. Next two shots could be key to this first frame. Twenty-nine. Thank you. Thank you. Let's carry on. Okay, thank you. Well, he's playing the brown. The brown's unmissable. The yellow could be, I suppose. Still got the angle. But just hit them a little bit too solid with not enough pace. So nothing to go at. Just chip that from this side. He'd like a touching ball it's here. It's touching. Oh, it is touching. It's just it's a lot easier to play the safety shot. You just play away from the reds. As long as the red doesn't move, of course, it's no foul. John Higgins, 33. And a couple of good pots in the break, but he'll be disappointed. too thick. No harm done. But he's not really put any pressure on John's safety shot here. A wealth of experience, of course, John Higgins. Although he's got that a little bit thick as well. ball and he's left a red now to the left corner. John Higgins will definitely take it on. It's whether you try and hold for the the pink into the opposite corner or screw across the face of the black. He probably feels he can play it better if he screws across the face. Well he's looking at an alternative red. I mean, the one to the left corner looks the shot to play, but first frame, maybe he's just feeling a little bit nervy. But no, as you expect with John Higgins, playing the right shot.
Great shot. Played it positively, as you said, John. Nice little flick on the red there, just out for the black. Yeah, but for that flick, he may not have been on the black, but he deserves to be on the black. Good pot. Played that, played that nicely. Had to force it off the top cushion. And just run through for the pink here. Nine. Yeah. He'd like to get the red that's closest to this bottom right hand corner pocket. I'd like to take that after this pink. Just it would open up the, the other two reds into the same corner pocket. I'm quite sure what he'll try and attempt to get on that from this pink. No, just wants to take the loose ones first. Yes, and the two reds just below the one he's 15. playing. I'm sure the right hand one of those two will go into the right corner. Would like to have been a little straighter on this. Red. He's now considering whether he could run through, just nudge into those reds and still leave himself on the pink. Striking low, he doesn't think he can play that shot. So back up for the blue 16. and he cued that so well in, he only got into it too much. But now there's distance between the colour and the next red that's required. Hence the wry smile. Yeah, a bit of adrenaline. Over screwed that by quite some margin was hoping to be on the blue here now that red I spoke about the one over the bottom right hand corner pocket he may try and get on it now no not this time the top red of the two beside the pink will pot but it's not 18 as easy as he would have liked And now he'll have to play for the red that Ken suggested. And you can never take these for granted, particularly if you're playing it with a little bit of pace, which you'll have to, to get good position on pink or blue. The black's not available into the opposite corner. He's got to play this with a little bit of left-hand side as well. As you said, John, a bit of pace. These are missable. Oh, he played it nicely. 26. Of course, the good thing about potting that red now is the one that's nearest the bottom right-hand corner pocket pots and just opens that pocket up nicely. Quick glance at the score. He's 51 ahead, so he needs pink and one more red. Mm, helpful little kiss. He may well have been on nothing 32. There. Now there's a red along the top cushion. He can just roll it in. He'll go 58 points in front with just 51 remaining. There is the other red to play. But only the red required. Thirty-three. Good solid start from the twice Masters champion. At the moment, three snookers to tie, three four point snookers to tie. Playing the double. No way to the table now for Mark Allen. This has been an excellent break, John, hasn't it? Very controlled. Part some good 
balls and particularly the opening red was just fantastic as we see it again and just not only the pot just watch the 45. little 45 lucky little flick off the red but deserved every bit of it well the red's 45 not going in the first round that'll be enough from John Higgins Karen. good sorry start from John Higgins couple of long reds breaks of 33 and that finishing one of 45 he leads 1-0 John Higgins, what a record that is. And you look at his century breaks the last few years per season, uh, they're not decreasing any, which as I say is a great compliment to his desire and he's still putting the work in the practice. And of course all these tournaments to play, Ken, you need to be focused, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, the second frame. Mark Allen to break. There's the wonderful Waterford Crystal Trophy. Both players will be hoping to get their hand on Sunday night. John, of course, has won it twice, the Paul Hunter Trophy, as it aptly named now. After the late great Paul Hunter, what a player he was. And uh, this Masters three times. John Higgins has won it twice. Not always been his favourite tournament. First time he's been in the semi-finals in six years. It's quite incredible. I'm well, not quite certain. He played the pot on the red there. I think he played a safety. Just caught it a bit thinner than he... He needed to, and that double kiss has left this red on for Mark. Of course, Mark got first chance One. in the opening frame. Tremendous long pot on the, the red, but missed the red in the middle and never had another chance after that. Yeah, just come a little higher on the black than he would have liked. He could pot the pink and be on the extreme red of the the bunch and it goes into the bottom right hand corner pocket. Just seeing where the pink would spot if he does pot it. He just pot the pink and stun it the cue ball just forward a couple of inches. Second half, and as in the first frame, the pink doesn't spot on its own spot, so it has to go directly in line. But there you see, he's nicely on the, the red into this bottom corner pocket now. Thank you. And it's chances Seven. like this, John, that Mark Allen was taken against Ronnie O'Sullivan. I think he won. Five of the six frames in one visit. Tremendous scoring in that quarter final match. Eight. Well, I know we've played and seen him quite a few times in recent years when we've done that tournament in Goffs in Ireland in January. And he's the type of player, Mark that when he's on his game, you just feel there's not a ball on the table he couldn't pot if he went for it. He's that 15. type of player. And in this position, little stuns and screws. Put your flashlight off. Thank you. Some with a flashlight. Right in line with the shot. Not the best thing to do. Anyway, fortunately, he's got up and regrouped. 16. But he's... Uh, Tremendous break builder. His, his style of queuing suits that little short action, but keeps nice control when you're playing little stuns and screws around the black spot area. He's tailor made for it. Yeah, particularly on these fast clots, it makes 23. A series of nice little kisses and cannons in around the pink and black spot, and 
when you watch Plenty the cue ball it's always got really tight control and that's the essence of a good brake builder it wasn't a great pack to go into there and that's why he's getting on the loose red 31 32. One more loose red, it's the extreme red at the right of the bunch into the left centre. The bottom one does pot as well into this bottom left hand corner pocket if you overran the cue ball. Yeah, which he has done, I'm certain he'd rather be on the red to the left centre. It would have been a straightforward positional shot. Now, He's going to run into other reds. Not guaranteed position on the colour. Yeah, he's just wondering, can he pot this red and brush off the red just to the left of it? Try and send the cue ball back up towards the blue or a ball colour. If he hits the first red, that he, the, the red that he's closest to, if he hits that first, could end up on nothing. And that's what's happened. 40. He's still got a shot in the black and possibly even the blue, but a lot more difficult than he would have liked. Well, the choice is the black. Now, if he plays a little drag, he could possibly hold for that red that's nearest the cue ball now. Oh, played it beautifully. Played it absolutely perfectly. <laughs> Fully committed. Had to be. Seven. Mark Allen, 47. Well, how many times, yep. Ken, do we see that? When you see a player, it looks as though he broke the back of the break and played a great shot on the black, and then just no concentration. That's all I can put it down to on that red. Yeah, and I missed the red into that same middle pocket in the first frame. Cost him. When he had first opportunity, but... John can take this on into this right corner pocket. Can hold for the blue. No. They're never easy, those. Playing it into a blind pocket. And he knew that the only red he could leave was the one he was playing. So he could say it was half a chance, but John would be just pleased that Mark Allen broke down when he did. For all money, when he potted the black and finished nicely on that red, looked as though it could have been a frame winning contribution. Yeah, played that nicely. Lots of check side. Just to straighten up the cue ball and avoid the kiss on the red. Let's on the left cushion, he's John in a bit of trouble here. Natural path of the cue ball when playing one of these reds is going towards that red that's on the left hand side cushion, so he's got to try and avoid that. Where's the cue ball going? Oh. Mark Allen, four. Mm. 
It's all about fractions. If it had rattled and stayed in the jaws, it would have been safe. But this red, with ball in hand, is on to the right corner. One. Needs to stop short of the bolt line. And it has. So a choice of yellow or green. And if he gets a good positional shot here, surely he'll win the frame. Three. Second again, please, Mark. You probably heard referee Jan Verhaas asking him, asking Mark to give him a second which tells us that the pink spot is still not available. 61 points to lead. Just looking for red colour red now to get to the snooker required stage. Thank you. Ten. Eleven. May have to play a little cannon just to hold for the the frame when he ready needs. Played it perfectly. So this red will put him seventy points 18. in front with just sixty seven remaining. John Higgins, well, he only had a, a very difficult red to go at when Mark missed the red to the middle. And that will mean that John Higgins will not be coming back to the table. 26. 27. Early observations, John, but both players look... Very confident and seeing the ball very well. Good stroke. 33. Yeah, I suppose the only thing is that uh, Mark Allen 34. has missed a couple of reds to the middle. Uh, cut one cost him the first frame. He got away with it in this. But I think the main thing from the neutral's point of view, both players have had their hand on the table. Potted a few balls. 40. So it can only improve from here. 41. 41. Yeah. Delightful touch. 48. Brenda. Red and keep it over the left center. Forty-nine. Might just drop the pink in and leave the double on the red. But this will certainly settle him down, Mark Allen. Fifty-five. Yeah, all the way there. Fifty-six. Sixty-three. 
Well, you won't be too bothered three. about the yellow. John Mark Higgins Allen. gives Jan Bahas the nod and say, frame over. Mark Allen is up and running. It's John Higgins won. Mark Allen won. Shall we say a measured, measured approach? Yeah. Okay. One, one. Back we go. The break-off shot has left the red to the left corner. Oh, it will depend whether Mark thinks there's value in playing the pot, and if he does, can he get position on the black? It's really becoming a poison chalice. <laughs> yeah, excellent shot from Mark Allen. Perfectly on the black here. Another little cannon on the red just above. Mm. We see this long pot again. Eight. He could have played that little cannon better. Nine. He'd be very disappointed. Normally so good at that shot, John. We spoke about in the last frame. Like it's just a simple little cannon. And this shot, the balls were very, very close. I don't forgive him for that type of shot, but it was the previous one he'd be very disappointed with. Yeah, the uh, cannon from the black. He was very tentative. And being left-handed, of course, this black is not an option. This is the one, should have played it with more pace. And no reason not to play it with a little bit more pace, because the ready cannon could have just sprung a few other reds out. So maybe just a little bit tentative. Big match. Never been to a Masters final. Hmm, mm. well, there you go, there's a piece of wood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you want to play with it, or do you want another one? Get another one. Can we ask for another one, Marcel, please? It doesn't look straight. Okay. Amazing. You can grab another one, please, Mark. Thanks. They were probably going to make a cue out of it, and then because it wasn't straight, decided to make it into a spider. <laughs> Have a look at this. And no one has noticed it all week. <laughs> I tell you, it'd be, it'd be really funny if this was even more crooked than the first one, I tell you. <laughs> With it being a spider, it's not as though you can roll it on the table, is it, to That's see if it's been, straight? They've been like that for... They're all like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put this one back. And now we're going to improvise. Put the rest on top of the normal spider. Very precarious. Thank you. Mark Allen, nine. Well, in the end, yes, well played.
Well, it looks as though it could be a decent break or shot. Certainly stopped the escape back to Bork. I think John may just be able to get past the blue to this red on the left-hand side of the tail, but I don't see a path back to Bork off that one. And it's the only one he can hit. Yeah, not too dissimilar to Mark Allen's opening red, but the problem with this one, as opposed to Mark Allen's, there's a bit more pressure on this because of the open reds. And that's why he's decided to play a safety shot, and that's good match play from John Higgins. <laughs> Couldn't afford to take that on, because he knew if he missed it, he was leaving a red into this right-hand corner pocket. He may still have done. Yeah, I was just thinking he may just have overrun this. I think this red is cuttable. Yeah. <laughs> Needs to run the cue ball. Six. Seven. Well, being left-handed, the yellow, not a problem, but he's got quite a bit to do with the cue ball here. Got to force it back up the table. Looking to play on the red that's near the black spot. He's not going to reach there. Could have played that better. He's under hit no. that. Yeah, and under hit that by quite some margin. He wanted to get on the red either on the black spot or the one just above it. You see, it's open into this bottom right hand corner pocket. And that's a bad miscalculation. Cue ball could have travelled yeah. under at least 18, maybe 20 inches. Just as it is, yeah? Now is the yellow coming to his rescue. Oh dear, it is. Very fortunate there. How do you get to the red over the corner? How do you play to cover it? Well, Ken's put a line in there. You just feel when you're playing that shot, you're going to go very close to Brown. But what else has he got on? I mean, if he wasn't so close to yellow, he could come off the left-hand side cushion and nestle into the red just below the pink. But he's thinking of trying to get there off one, two, three, four cushions. But he's got to get very close to the left middle pocket if that's going to work okay one two three but now it will slide low off the fourth one and he'll leave the red foul and a miss mark allen foot miss called but obviously won't be taken I wonder will he play a little cannon here a plant one red onto the other stay in the black One. Well, he, played, he didn't want to kiss the black on the way through with the cue ball and just knocked it into a safer position. Just have a look at the little kiss he got on the black. You could try and pot this black down this top cushion, but 
very difficult. Oh, he's played it very well. Very good shot indeed. Well, that was a pressure shot, and he couldn't have played that much better. Great shot. Eight. Must take his chance here, you feel. No. Got a big slice of luck when he covered that red with the yellow. out better 16 he's got a red to the far left corner but he was hoping for something easier than this and as I say he can pot don't have to do much with the cue ball no nope. no nope. Mark Allen 16 and a little bit jabby at that I'll be honest with you I fancied him to knock it in So it was a good chance, and he's not taken it. That will give John Higgins a little bit of hope. But what has John got to go at? Does this red close to cue ball past the blue? If not, he can play it to the left middle. It's left middle he's playing it to. No. Always difficult those into a blind pocket. You know you can see the cue ball, the object ball, but you've not got the pocket in the eye line, so makes them difficult. So once again, not being punished for his mistakes, Mark. One. That struggled in. Mark Allen won. It wasn't easy, and of course, trying to hold the cue ball for those two reds into the right centre made it a bit more difficult. Now, what can John Higgins do? Twenty-six minutes since John last potted the ball. Wow. The tension out there, John. Yeah, as we said, both players have got the hand on the table in the first two frames, so you expect them to relax. But Mark Allen's been a little bit tentative last couple of visits to the table, and I certainly didn't expect John Higgins to miss that. ball into the pack of reds. Big target. It's not too bad. Eight. 47 points to lead now. Looking for another three reds. Nine. And there's three reds nicely in the open, which would clinch the frame.
16. Seventeen. So this red to go sixty two points 22. ahead with just fifty nine remaining. Nothing flawless, but John Higgins is coming up to well, the 30th minute since he last potted a ball. A couple of half chances. And sometimes that's all you get at this level. Overstand that. 28. Not certainly left hand. Two goals, it doesn't. Mark so Allen, whether John Higgins wants to play for frame. snookers. He doesn't. He nods his concession. So Mark Allen, as I say, not flawless. But he'd be happy with the scoreline. He leads 2-1. Yes, he will indeed. Right, Steve, your assessment of that third frame. Uh, well, I, I like the way Mark Allen plays the game. Uh, his economy of movement, not just of the, the cue ball, but also of his cue, on what, which are, we always talk about these cloths being super fast. The faster, you know, the, faster the, the cloth, the less distance you really have to pull the cue back in order to hit the ball. You don't have to hit it so hard. So players that have a very long backswing, and there are a number in the game, they've got to then hit the ball quite slowly or seem to go through quite slowly to then play a soft shot. Whereas Mark Allen... Very short pullback and then has a sharper, more positive delivery. Stephen? Yeah, the, the, da the danger of the longer queue action is the deceleration going through when you're playing slow shots. You end up, then you miss everything thin, um, and that's the biggest problem. For, for, but Mark Allen is not going to get that. As Steve said, it's always you know, accelerating through the ball. Um, so that takes, um, you know, there's, there's very little can go wrong when, when, you know, when there's that short between the bridge hand and the cue ball. Uh, we've had problems with wasps <laughs> and flies, and we had a problem with the spider. Yes, uh, yes, the, yes, the swan neck spider. I have it here. I'll be sure. So this is the spider that um, Mark Allen there, he, he didn't quite like uh, this spider. It looked like it was a bit bent there. Perhaps uh, Yuri Geller's been under the table giving it a bit of special treatment. I don't know. It doesn't look too bad to no, me, but... Uh, yeah. We had a look at it backstage. Actually, during that frame, it doesn't look too much wrong with it. Anyway, back we go. <laughs> Not the best break off shot. Left to cut here. This red to the left middle. Bit careless from Mark. This will be a frame that John Higgins you know is very, very important. He doesn't want to go into the mid session interval, which will come after this frame. <coughs> Two behind. And gets first chance at this red. And in it goes. <laughs> So it's been just over 30 minutes since he last potted the ball. But that's sometimes the nature of snooker. Anyway, it's in. What can he make of the chance? I don't think there's a straightforward red to play on here. Yeah, it's the age-old problem when you play that shot. If you don't hit the pink full Six. in the face, if you hit it half ball on either side and where uh, John hits it half ball, the cue ball's bound to be coming towards this top cushion. And unless a red comes with it, you're going to be on nothing. John Higgins, six. Be very disappointed. Good yeah. Gifted Mark Allen another chance here. Yeah, he was uh, left that difficult shot, but the problem is that John has now opened up the reds, so this chance is an even better one for Mark. One. He doesn't have to be playing too many cannons early on. Just overran the cue ball slightly. Has to go in and out of bog now. 
avoid the ball colours, cue ball. Well, this looks pretty good. Looks very good. Six. And he's got a nice angle on this red. He can pot the red, stun off this top cushion and get the black into the same pocket. Seven. Oh, this is normally where he's so good. Fourteen. Around this black spot. Keeping tight control of this cue ball. Fifteen. As John said, not much work to do. There's plenty of reds in the open here. May play a little cannon into the red and pink here. Well, not this time, but maybe should have. He hasn't played that very well. 22. Yeah, I can only assume the red he's closest to is played for the left middle. Because I agree with you, why not play the cannon on the red and pink? Because the red he's going to play now, the one immediately above the black, he'd have been on that if he'd have played the cannon. But he's running into other balls, so he's got to judge how the cue ball will run through the other reds. We were singing his praises when he was in and around the black spot area, but so far, he's not been that impressive. Twenty-three. It's not too bad. It's not tight on the cushion, it's a bit straight on the black, but at least he can dig down on the cue ball. He could force it in off two cushions and he's back in a better position now. 30. Thirty-one. And just look at the way those reds are lined up around the pink spot. All four of them pot into this bottom left-hand corner pocket. So no more cannons 36. required. Thirty-seven. Almost like a practice routine the way the rides are spread now. Forty two. Forty-three. And that's the only problem with going up for the blue. Didn't feel comfortable playing for the black. The only advantage is he's got the red on the left-hand side of the table he can play for here. It's OK. Forty-eight. But when you're in this position, if you can retain good position in and around the black spot area, particularly yeah. with the reds being at this end, it makes it so much more easy to manoeuvre the cue ball. Thank you. But you wouldn't expect any mistakes 49. from here. This black will put in 50 points in front with just 75 remaining. So after this black, and a couple of reds and colours would be sufficient. Fifty-six. And losing the first frame to go into the mid-session interval with a two-frame advantage. 
He'd be well pleased. Yeah, very similar to what happened against Ronnie O'Sullivan. Lost the very first frame, but went on to win that match 6-1. Thanks. 57. Again, just slightly over on the cue ball for the blue. Sixty-one. Sixty-two. There's two interesting spectators. Nick Baines, Peanut, as he's now from the Kaiser Chiefs, and his dad, Alan. Big snooker fans, supporters. <laughs> nice to have you here, lads. 67. 68. This is much better for Mark Allen. Complete control of the cue ball during this break. 75. Just one slip up at the beginning 76. of it, but other than that, it's been very impressive. A concerned looking John Higgins. Started off very well. Missed a couple of reds. 83. One in this and one, two in the last frame. 84. Yeah, just get the feeling now that he's getting a head of steam up here. 90. Mark Allen. He can be very fluent when he really gets going. Shame. No century. The century oh, right. seems to have dried up recently, Mark but Allen. still that won't bother Mark Allen. He takes a deserved 3-1 lead into the mid-session interval. Well, I'm not too sure if our cameras have shown you this yet, but there are a couple of chaps who are in the crowd tonight wearing the Northern Ireland football shirts, the Green and White Army. They're in tonight, and they'll be delighted. Very much so. Mark Allen, is, as John Virgo just said, is, is starting to look good. It's starting to look dangerous in the balls. Um, John Higgins is, is starting to weaken a little bit, which is a bit strange. He's, he's, he's missed a couple of easy shots and, um, you know, sort of weak efforts at pots, which is not, not like him. So he'll probably need to maybe go to the practice table, have five or ten minutes there, get his, get his arm going again. Remarkable venue tonight. Yes, Jason, the atmosphere has been electric. And to be fair, it's been electric all week. Thank you, ladies Sometimes and gentlemen, when you lose five. your star turns like Ronnie John or Sullivan, it just goes down a notch or two, but that's not happened. And that match this afternoon you were referring to with Kyron Wilson and Judd Trump, that got everybody excited. We've seen some wonderful snooker. As I say, Ken, the, the century breaks, we were talking about the record of 31 being beaten, just dried up a little bit now, the centuries, as we've got near the end of this tournament. Yeah, we thought we were going to be in for a record number of centuries. I think we had, we had 20 centuries after just four days play, but yeah, yeah. it seemed to have dried up since. It did change the cushion cloth midway through the tournament, and of course it's a new cloth now on for semi-finals and final. I wonder, we've always said sometimes the interval can change a match, stops a player who's got into a bit of a rhythm and that was certainly Mark Allen. It'd be interesting to see as a change for John Higgins. He's eyeing up a big shot here. it by the proverbial now where's he gone and he's not got away with it he's left a nice easy starter for Mark Allen not the start that John needed to the second half of this match one Yeah, 
Yeah, just over-screwed that cue ball. Wanted to have an angle to put the blue and get close to these reds. So he's too straight on the blue. He's going to have to just drop the blue in. Take a red from mid-distance. And the good thing is, and he's come down to have a look at this black. Does it pot into the bottom left-hand corner pocket? I'm sure it does. So he's just got to stun this red in, and he'll be on the black. Six. There you see. Well, yeah, that was a bit twitchy. John Higgins having a look Mark over Allen Mark six. Allen's shoulder there. It was a little bit twitchy, that one. Yeah. I know it always looks as though a player's hit it too hard when they miss the pot, but he no need to hit it that hard there. It should have been a nice, soft, stunned run through. As you say, he didn't deliver the cue smooth at all there. So that may give John Higgins a bit of hope, and particularly if he can make the most of this opportunity. This will put a seed of doubt into Mark Allen's mind. So he's on the black. Yeah. Intentional kiss on that red. Eight. It's okay if the black is into the right corner, but it doesn't, so he's gonna to have to go up for the the blue it appears. While the pink obviously goes. Nine. But he's under hit that. So he's still feeling a little edgy out there, is John. See the shake of the head, and he's 15. He wanted to be straighter on this red so he could just run through and have the black into the left corner pocket. Well, as you said, John, he's a bit edgy. Needs to find the gap between the reds. I'm potting this red, try and get back up for blue. It's not straightforward, this. There is a gap. Well, he's played it the other way, but Thanks. played it very nicely indeed. He was sixteen the Excellent shot. Looks like he's played for a 21 to the corner. I'm just looking, there's two reds in the middle of the table, look very much like a plant. Mm, can be made. It's a bit of distance between the two balls, but just play the first one as though you're trying to pop that. And it should knock the second one into the pocket. Yeah, no problem. 22. Would have preferred to have had a little bit more of a bounce off the side cushion than he's got. He looks to have played that nicely. He can get through to the red that's just to the right of the black. That's the one he wants to 29. clear. Makes the black available into both corners. On it perfectly. Thirty. I 
Held the cue ball nicely for this. 37. Red just above the black. He's also got a red to the right centre as well, but this is his preference. Thirty-eight. He's got a lovely angle now. He can go into the the two reds directly in line with the black, just near the pink spot. He can get his full ball into that one. He'll be on this red into the bottom right-hand corner pocket, and he's played that nicely, just a little bit close for comfort. 45. Could have done with that cue ball being in the open. 46. Nicely played. 46. Yeah, it's always difficult when you're hampered, and he was badly hampered. The advantage was, didn't have to do a lot with the cue ball. He's okay. 53. Not inch perfect, not exactly what he played for. He'll have to go up for the blue. He's got to be careful. With that red near the left middle, he doesn't see himself. But he played that nicely. And of course, this is where all these great experience will come in. He knows 59. how important this visit is particularly after the misread from his opponent. You've got to punish 60. those mistakes. And when this blue goes in, he'll be looking for one more red, and he'll be at the snooker's required stage. 65. This will put him 60 points ahead with 59 remaining. 66. Seventy-four. So every chance 81. now for John Higgins to make century, and it will be a landmark in his career, because at the moment, career centuries, 699. 82. Looking for his 700th career century now. And the 26th of the tournament. 89. Yeah, incredible landmark. Only Stephen Hendry with 775 and Ronnie O'Sullivan in the 900 plus mark. He's above him. The all-time greats. A bit straight on this black. 19. And played this nicely. Beautiful shot. 97. I think what will please him most, John, not only getting this entry. 98. I think just winning the frame in one visit, being kept cold, missed a few in the first session, would have... Annoyed him. This is much better. Century 700 in his career for John Higgins. Fantastic. 104. And couldn't have come at a better time for him. Okay, John. The match is certainly hotting up now, John. 106. Fantastic. Yes, and just what he needed to do. OK, he was given the opportunity by the bad miss from Mark Allen, but that is the game. Nobody's that good that they can pot everything. But when they do make the mistake, and particularly when you're 3-1 behind, you've got to show character and you've got to show your opponent if he makes a mistake, it's going to cost him dear. 
and he's done that here. This has been a marvellous break from John Higgins. 118. One hundred and twenty-four. Absolutely fantastic. Seven hundred career century, twenty-six of the tournament. But more importantly for John Higgins, winning a frame in one visit and showing Mark Allen that he's there to be reckoned with. He's one behind though, it's three-two. Mark Allen. Absolutely brilliant stuff from John Higgins. The perfect response after the interval. That's what it means to our tournament centuries board. We're up to 26. And remember, 31 is the Masters record 2009. Wonderful stuff from Higgins, Stephen. Yeah. Steam going, uh, then you can start pumping in frame winning breaks left, right, and center. But it's tough against another player to. Uh, to to guarantee dominating. And therefore put pressure on your opponent. That's a chance of a red to the left corner, but doesn't fancy it playing the safety. A little bit pacey. On and off the ball cushion. But safe enough. Bigger bounce than he would have liked off that ball cushion. He's got a couple of reds to go at. Try and take the red that's closest to the left centre pocket and maybe screw back for blue. Could only possibly leave this red if he misses it, and that's the reason he's going to take this on. That's the only red he can leave on, and that's what exactly what he's done. <laughs> yep. We saw the poor safety shot from Mark Allen. It's not cost him anything. And offered him up a real good chance. Thanks. One. Eight. Nine. Just heard Mark 16. just bang his cue on the floor as he was walking round because he's finished a little bit twist in between here. This isn't perfect. Seventeen. He managed to be able to hold for the blue. Not certain he can pot the blue and hold for the loose red though. Try to roll through and play for the red in the left middle once again. 22. Not a good position. No, he had a lot of room for error there. Could have 
travelled with that cue ball at least another six inches. And when we deal in fractions, you often say, John, that's a really bad miscalculation. Yet again, we did say about intervals and how it can just change the rhythm of a match when a player, as Mark Allen was, getting on top of John Higgins, all of a sudden he's, he's going to be cold. Mark Allen, 22. Needs to miss the brown, and he has done, and therefore, excellent safety. The way the reds are spread, you need a good length here. You need to find that port cushion. And that's much too thick. Much too thick. Is the blue going to come to his rescue? Or maybe hampered by the yellow. Hampered by the yellow. It's a bit fortunate there was John Higgins. He could well have left the red as well to the left corner, but you've got one covering the other. There'd be no hesitation to play this red to the right corner, but as I say, hampered by the yellow. Doesn't make it very appetizing. But he found one. one. Has that flick on the blue helped? It certainly has. I think he can just get through to the brown. to get on the Five. red next to the pink but he's still okay always had this sort of red he needs to get Six. top side of the blue he hasn't done the wrong side have to go in and out of bulk again oh needed that just to miss the yellow 11. <clears throat> Gonna need another good shot here in the red. Good pot. Very good pot. 12. Played up well. Straight on the green. He's also got the blue into the bottom right hand corner pocket as well. Hasn't hit this good either. Fifteen. Just hasn't got in position, has he? No. He's certainly making hard work of this. But the one thing he can do, and we mentioned this earlier, if he puts his mind to it, he can pot anything. 
There's nothing beyond him. Absolutely inch perfect on the blue. It is now a frame winning chance. Twenty one. Twenty two. Twenty-eight. Still looking for three more reds. To finish the Twenty-nine. Frame of this visit. But you have to say, it looks a formality. Thirty-five. Red and a black would put him sixty-five points in front with sixty-seven remaining. <laughs> Could play up for the pink and play for the red on the left hand side of the table. Because this is the last of the easy reds to get on. But just one good positional shot should be okay. 36. He's played for the pink to the middle. which gave him a nice, easy position on this red that he needs to clean the frame. This to go 65 ahead, with 59 remaining. 43. So John Higgins, who came back to the last frame with a marvellous break of 131. He's not had a chance. Well, he's had a couple of half chances in this frame. Not being able to take them. He won't be getting another one. 49. 50. Yeah, good response, this, from Mark Allen. 50. Lost position a couple of times during this break, but kept the goal on some marvellous pots. 57. Yeah, worked right, good speed a little bit. He's been good snooker. Got a 90 break in the fourth frame. 131 from John in the last frame. 58 and counting here. He's got to go in and out of ball and try and get on these two reds. Yeah, normally it would be, you'd think, straightforward, but the yellow could come into play. He's got to avoid the kiss on the yellow. Can he avoid the yellow? No. But it won't matter. 65. John Higgins will not come back to the table. Thank you. So, 65. It was interesting, though. It was going to be interesting to see how Mark Allen resumed after losing the last frame, as he did, but... Business as usual. He's two frames ahead again. 4-2. Yep, very good response, Steve, from the Northern Irishman. Yeah, I think he's the most uh, efficient player at the moment amongst the balls in the whole tournament. Uh, and yeah, going back to that point about uh, economy of moving the cue backwards and forwards, he seems to be controlling uh, the breaks very well around uh, the top end of the table. And, and if you're playing well and you are enjoying yourself out there, you're going to suffer less from the tension. And he seems to be playing 
pretty tension free in what is a very big moment in his career. Yeah, Steve has mentioned we're seeing a different Mark Allen in this mm. championship, aren't we? Especially tonight as well. He looks very calm and as Steve says, looks like he's enjoying the moment. Yeah, very much so. Um, I, I, I sat with him before his match with Ronnie O'Sullivan and I thought, you know, this was a massive match coming up, but I thought he just sat there and was very relaxed and, and not um, didn't look tense at all and he's the same tonight um, and it's and it's important that he keeps this this cushion of, of two frames because it's not easy when you're in John Higgins position you keep chasing and chasing um, so he yeah, keeps you know piling on the, the, these frames and, and, he, and he's going to be hard to hard to beat to the final to face Kyron Wilson Just get the feeling the way these frames are going that the first one in seems to not necessarily win the frame in one visit but build up a lead and then I've not been too impressed with the safety consistently from both players so if you can get in first and make 35, 40 you know you can sort of sit on that lead you can only remember one frame really against the head and that was when John Higgins made his 1-3-1 when Mark Allen got in and missed a, a straightforward red to the corner. But other than that, first in, it's been winning the frame. So these ex safety exchanges at the beginning, very, very important. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Can't do much with this safety shot because of that red. It's gone up into bulk. Mark Allen's got a shot here. Go off the right-hand side of the pack with a bit of left-hand side. He's looking at a possible plant he could make. Not sure whether it's worth the risk. He's got a 4-2 lead. It's a bit risky. Yeah, funny enough, when John Higgins just played the role up, he did have a look at the possibility of this plant, and was he leaving it? And I think he thought, well, I think it's too risky for for Mark to go for. And it turns out he was probably right. just going to try and roll off this red and put the cue ball down towards this bottom right hand corner pocket here. Tried to get it as close to the jaws of the pocket as he could and it's come up a bit short. the best okay it's close to the ball cushion but he's left him on this red really needed to be covering that red with the brown he's left the tempter yeah, John's eyeing up the pot into the right middle I'm just a little bit concerned where the cue ball is going to go he's got the pot where's the cue ball going oh. well, I was concerned about that Mark Allen for Always had a look that that cue ball was going to go close to the corner pocket. when you're playing off the side of the pack you're always aware that you're not knocking a red towards either corner pocket 
And that's why he played it with a bit more pace at that red that came out into the open of the table just below the blue. He hit it hard enough to make sure it was away from the corner pocket. Better safety shots we've seen. Thank you, John. Well, he can get through to hit this red, but he can't see enough to play the pot. He's looking at it. I don't blame him shaking his head. Don't see how he can get back to the balk end. If he tries to come thin off this red, every possibility of a double kiss. He's got to catch this just right. And just avoided the double kiss, and that, believe me, is as good a safety shot as he's played all evening. Well played. Got to catch this just right to avoid the double kiss. But that's a great reply from Mark Allen. <laughs> Beginning to find the ball cushion area now. And that red that's gone close to the left hand side cushion just makes this safety shot back down the ball so much more difficult. May have to play a containing safety shot here. But the problem of leaving the cue ball there is that the red left of the pink pots into the right centre. The way Mark Allen's been playing, can't see him missing this. That's the one. <laughs> Poor choice from John Higgins. Not often you'd say that in a safety shot. No, but uh, it was two excellent safeties from Mark Allen that has created this chance. And you just felt it was a touch great change that John Higgins needed to win, was desperate to win. Six. And now Mark Allen with an opportunity to get within one frame of tomorrow's final. Seven. Twelve. There is one red just to the left of the black that's available to the right corner. Could play a cannon here though into the main bunch. That's what he's doing. How's your look? It looks pretty good to me. It looks absolutely perfect. Sixteen. Well, this is an excellent shot. Couldn't play that any better. Fantastic. Seventeen. Uh, they're all there. The resigned look on John Higgins's face. Yeah, he'll be fearing the worst. And of course, that's why we say this is a tough game, Snooker, because no matter how good you are, when you sign that seat, you have no right of reply. 24. you just got to sit there and hope that your opponent makes a mistake and you get back to the table. It 
it's hard to see where that mistake's going to come from, though. Could play a little cannon into the two reds that are really close together, just above the black. That's the one, just split them open, and it's worked out perfectly. Brought those two reds into play, and now... 32. Thirty-three. He's playing exactly now the way he played against Ronnie O'Sullivan. Looking very composed. Fifty six, fifty seven. That's it. Zeke is required. Sixty eight points to lead. Just sixty seven remaining. Another excellent contribution. Nothing John Higgins could do about this. Two very good safety shots from Mark Allen created this opening. Well, pity. We're not going to see a centre. We may see Mark John Allen. Higgins play on. because There's only one snooker required. See it, 68 behind, 67 remaining. One snooker required, but first of all, cope with this tricky red along the top cushion. No, no, it just went Frank away. And he it. looks at Frank. Mark Allen and says, it, That's enough if you like. And of course, Mark Allen does like, and he accepts the concession. And he's now one frame away for a Dapper Bet Masters final for the first time in his career. He leads 5 2. His back's been against the wall. He's produced some fantastic comebacks and fantastic, fantastic performances. So I wouldn't rate him off yet. There are many of you telling us on social media how much you're enjoying your Saturday night live snooker. Thank you very much indeed for getting in touch with us. And I shall remind you, Ken and John, that Judd Trump was 5-2 up in his match this afternoon. Look what happened to Judd. Yes. But I agree with Stephen. I don't expect... Mark Allen to play any rash shots, but then on the other hand, you've got, still got to keep your balance, you've still got to go for your shots, you can't just park the bus, so to speak. Somebody's got to put the points on the board. But I do think it's imperative, he didn't do it the last frame, because there was some excellent safety from Mark Allen, but John Higgins has just got to try and get in first in, in however many frames we play. These opening tactical exchanges are so important. And that's a mistake from Mark. There was a red to the left corner, but position on a colour, not guaranteed. There's not many players 
that can beat John Higgins in the safety department. And up until now, Mark Allen is getting the best of that part of the game. 84% safety success for Mark Allen. So 83 just for John now. But this is a chance. Good shot. And held nicely for the black. Problem may be after putting this black, where will the the black spot? Well, he's tried to move the Switch red away flash from off, the please. black spot. Eight. Well, it hasn't worked out. John Higgins, eight. That's better. It'd be risky to try and get the cue ball back to the ball can, so I may just play a containing safety if he can leave the red near the jaws of this right corner pocket. Mind you, sometimes you can get a player in so much trouble that he tries to pot his way out of the problem. If anyone can, Mark Allen can. He's looking at this red, the second ride to the table. He's now looking at the potting angle. I think he's going to take it on. Can't see a safety. Rather go down, trying to play the pot. Tough one. Long way away. Now the cue ball running loose, the red running loose. What's he going to leave? Well, he's left a couple of pots. But John Higgins would like them a lot more if that cue ball wasn't so close to the side cushion. Tried to pot his way out of trouble. It's just the opening red that's the key. Well played, very well played. Believe me, when you find two down and every shot you could miss could be a last one. That was superb. He's got the chance. Can he take it? Yeah, not the greatest angle on that red into the left corner pocket, so this red into the left center. Nine. The red, obviously, he'd like to get on sooner rather than later is the one that's just below and to the left of the black. That would clear the black from both corner pockets. Just couldn't get on at the moment, but he's got a choice of reds. Well, I say 14. a choice, he's only really got one red because he'll have to play for the black in the same pocket. So, stun 
with the black in the same pocket as this red. 15. And now an opportunity, probably, to pot the black and play for the red just to the left of it and clear that black spot area. Just got to clear your mind of the score line. 22. Just concentrate on every pot at a time. Twenty-three. That certainly opens things up now for John Higgins here. A little bit of adrenaline 30. on the back arm there. He's overscrewed that by six or eight inches. Better. 31. Nicely controlled and held for the blue into the same pocket. Red either side of the pink. Maybe his next choice. Could go down for the red. Closest to the black as well. He's just having a look at that. He's going to try and put the cue ball in an area so he'll have a choice of reds. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. You could cut the atmosphere with a knife here now. I really feel the tension. 43. Yeah, well, everybody's come along to see a match this evening. John 44. Higgins, with this visit, is not letting them down. This is real back against the wall stuff from John. 't expect anything less from him though 50 as I say the way the frames have gone this evening it's so important to get this first chance 51 so the black one more red in a color. Looks a formality now. 58. This red would put him 67 points in front with 67 remaining. 59. Just overdone it a little bit, Mark Allen. Well, he's going to get an, a few more bites of the cherry to book his place in the final, but this frame looks to have gone now. And in goes the green. Tremendous opening red from John Higgins. It has to be said. All the pressure in the world on it. 62. And 63. to be fair, since he potted that opening red, has never looked like missing. 70. 71. Mm, nice shot. Nice angle on the black to bring those two reds into play. Oh, 
Just missed the little cannon on those two reds. 78. Needs a good pot now to keep the break going. This is great stuff. 79. A great response from a great champion. Not right. How about right. this for a three ball plant? Red onto the black. black. Oh, we can get through to the red. <coughs> Didn't look like it from our position. So this could 85. be century number 701. Yeah. 92. Now, when it pops this black, we like the nice cheer. <laughs> Twenty seventh of the tournament, creeping closer to that record of thirty one. One hundred and five. Well, all you want to know about John Higgins as a player, you're seeing it here. One hundred and fourteen. Good safety shot, but Mark Allen in trouble. Mark tried to pot his way out of it. And the opening red was a stunner. And the rest of it was absolutely sublime. So John Higgins hanging on in there. Mark Allen will be taking this for granted. Although he's still only one frame away from a place in the final. It's now 5-3. John. Your view on, on the crowd shouting, it looked like John wasn't very happy at all when he potted that black, somebody shouting, get in there, what's your view on yeah, that? Yeah, there's, there's, there's been a few this week shouting at uh, bad times and, and we can do without it, but I think um, you, you do get it at this venue. Yeah, yeah. Respect the players. Decent break off. There is a red that is available to the right corner, but under the cushion, and I don't see the potting angle giving him an opportunity for the black, so I'd be surprised if he took it on. Now, just the containing safety. John having a close look here, and I think... The reason, he's looking to see if that red would pass the green. If it doesn't, he may, well, does it? There's not all the pocket available. The reason I say that, he's got a red to the left middle. If he can play that and the only red he could leave was the one he was playing, he'd take it on. And he is. Not there. Well, as I say, he felt that that was the only red he could leave. Now, the one... Going past the green, there you can see there's maybe half a pocket available. John Higgins doesn't fancy Mark Allen potting it. I think if you were dead behind it, you'd be able to pot it, but such is the distance between the cue ball and the red, it's just so much more difficult. Gotta be so precise. It's a long way away. Tried to play it in such a way that I wasn't gonna only leave the red that he was playing, but cue balls come over far enough for this red. It's a very cute angle into the green pocket. But Definitely on.
Good shot. He's got a nice angle on the green, but he's going to need a lot of cue power here if he's going to go into the pack. Didn't go into them full, but he'll certainly be happy with the outcome there. The only problem is the black has gone slightly safe. Four. But if he can put the one into the right corner pocket and leave the black along the top cushion. He can play this Five. in such a way that even if he misses it, it'll be staying in the jaws yeah. of the pocket. So it takes the pressure off this shot. Still a tough pot, but knowing that you're not going to leave anything it makes it that just a little bit easier. Yes, and he's enough to play it with any pace. Just dead weight, just let gravity take over. Let gravity take over. So he gets the first chance in this frame. 12. He's got to leave himself low on the black here. Well, didn't 13. like it. Went up for the blue instead. Now, this time, pot the blue, try and hit that pink full in the face. Doesn't want to lose the cue ball. Didn't hit the pink full in the face, and that's what happens. 18. John Higgins, 18. Imperative now to get this cue ball tight to the ball cushion. Oh, don't kiss a ball colour. Mm, that's poor. That is very poor. John will be kicking himself. You can't afford to do that. So unlike him. This red just below the blue will go to the right corner. I'd be very surprised if Mark Allen doesn't take it on. And stun a cross for the black in the same pocket. One. Just as you called it. Great pot. will be kicking himself in that chair for hitting the yellow with the cue ball. Uh, what a chance for Mark Allen. <clears throat> Very loose safety Eight. from John. Here it is again. Wanted to just avoid the yellow, try and get that cue ball tight to the ball cushion. Can go into the heart of the pocket and subsequently 
Not nicely on the blue. Wanted to be top side. Bit of work to do with the cue ball here. Probably go back up for the blue. It's going to be a lovely target. If you can get a good angle on the blue here. A lovely 15. target of reds to go in and open the wall up and give himself that frame and match winning opportunity. Just got to be careful. There's no plants on there. I'm just knocking red close to this side. He's hit it nice and softly. Oh, he's played that well. Played that very well. Didn't, didn't hit it with a lot of pace. Was more controlled and just look at the result. He won't get a better 21. chance than this for his first appearance in a Masters final. Just got to hold himself together. There'll be a lot of tension in the arm. That I can assure you, but he's got to try and control 28. it. Thirty-seven. Forty-four. Quick glance at the scoreboard, 26 points in front. I suppose the red next to the pink and the two reds together make it a little bit awkward. He's just seen if the two reds together are possibly a plant to the middle. We can have a look now. Well, they can be made and they can also be made to this corner. They're close enough together to be able to reverse the second red. So he may play for the plant. Makes positional side of the shot a lot easier. 45. This to go 34 points in front. So he's still going to need three of the remaining reds. He's playing for the plant. He just wants reversing slightly. If you hit the first red on the 52. left hand side, it will push the second red to the right. As I say, it made position on the red that much easier. Yeah, nice control on that one. Still 16. needs red, cover red, to leave John Higgins needing snookers. Sixty-one. Well, just having a look here to see if this red's available, the one to the left of the pink. Not certain it is. If it isn't, he'll have to play a cannon. Well, he does have a nice angle, hasn't he, on the black just to play that little cannon. This black will put him 50 points in front with 51 remaining. He obviously thinks he can pot the red. Can he see enough of it? 68. He could. 69. And that's it. 
So John Higgins, his race is run. Didn't give up without a great fight. But Mark Allen... 75. Has really done well this evening when he's got in amongst the balls. He's not OK, made the hundreds, but he's made enough to win frames. And John Higgins has a congratulations. I'm certain which is in good luck for tomorrow. John Higgins did all he can, but there's a delighted Mark Howard in his first Dapper Bet Masters final. And there's Monty certain tomorrow, folks. We're going to have a new name on the trophy. Will it be Mark Allen? Will it be Kyron Wilson? We'll look forward to you coming in then. Mark Allen, he's in the final. We are indeed. Thanks to John Virgo and Ken Doherty for fantastic comments. Lots of Northern Ireland fans in tonight as well. And his amazing run over John Higgins in the Masters continues. Brilliant yeah. performance from Alan. Yeah, absolutely. He, he got himself over the line very well. Great way to finish a match. John Higgins, I mean, you would never think a careless safety could, co could cost you. Um, you know, caught the, caught the yellow. Mark Allen puts a fantastic first red. And from then on, it just looks inevitable. Just a brilliant performance for Mark Allen. So composed and effortless tonight, Steve. Yeah, this is the most impressive I've ever seen Mark Allen. I mean, I know he's had great wins. He's had great matches, but uh, he's looked cool, calm and collected out there. And when he's been asked the questions uh, against good players, well, great players, he's produced a very high standard of snooker, very controlled. His positional play is, is magnificent at the moment. If he can keeps controlling the ball that well, he's going to be so tough to beat. And, and Stephen, if you've knocked out Ronnie O'Sullivan and John Higgins on your way to a final, <laughs> you walk into that final thinking, come on, let's have it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, well, you couldn't ask for a much tougher draw. Yeah. Very Boys impressive. Been saying, well done, many congratulations. Boys been saying just how cool and calm and collected you were tonight, Mark. You wanted to be inside looking out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it didn't feel that way. I felt edgy, but I think it's even better for me that I felt edgy and still played pretty well. Great way to close the match out, that long red. and then, then Yeah, one because one visit. I could have played it as a shot and off him and I thought yeah. this could be my chance, just play properly off two cushions for the black. And I knew Landon Lowe was going to be able to move some reds next, but look, John's 5-2 down, but... He's never out of the match the way he can play, so that's another reason why I took that red on the way I did. Because you never know if you're going to get another chance with John. Um, uh, Mark, just explain how you are feeling. There, there are lots of people <laughs> just been looking at social media. There are lots of people in Northern Ireland who are watching our coverage this evening. How does it feel? You've made the final, the, the Masters final, and a final of a Triple Crown event. I could, it's good, but I come here to win the tournament. So if I don't win tomorrow, it's going to be very disappointing. Probably more disappointing to get so close and not win it. So I'm not getting too far ahead of myself. I have another big match tomorrow against Kyron and. If I just play the way I have been, I think I've got a good chance. And if I do go on and win it, then I'll be happy for all my friends, family, followers, and then for Northern Ireland also. Yeah, well, I've just asked Stephen the question. When you've knocked out Ronnie O'Sullivan, when you've knocked out John Higgins on your way to a final, you must be thinking tomorrow, tomorrow is your day. Possibly, but every day is different. <laughs> Look, I'm full of confidence because I've beat two of the very, very best yeah, of all time. Absolutely. You know, they're probably in the top four with the two sitting to my right, so yeah. I'm doing something right, but... It doesn't mean it, there's no God given right that I'm going to play that well tomorrow. Were, were you watching this afternoon's match at all? I've seen the end of it. I came yeah. down a bit earlier to avoid traffic and stuff, and I managed to catch the end of it. And I couldn't believe the plant Judd took on the last, but that's the way he plays. He lives by the sword and dies by the sword at times. N and not the, the finalist that maybe you would have expected, which is interesting. You'll probably be the favourite in that match, <laughs> I would imagine. It's interesting. Yeah, that's who I play. Was yeah. In big finals, I've got a half decent record, even playing the very best. So I just concentrate on my own game like I always do. And Mark, the boys here in studio, and Ken as well, they've detected something very different about the way you've approached the Masters this year. Do you feel different about them? Well, the tell tournament? me what they've said first. <laughs> <laughs> we were saying that like, you look like composed, relaxed. Even before Ronnie's match, I was talking to you, you look really relaxed, composed, not like tense or anything. You just, yeah, just round the table as well. I just feel happy we're running our games out right now, so I don't really care who you play. I've, 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 I've never been a worrier about who I play, so... I've always been a worrier how I'm going to play because I felt like at times over the years I've struggled, but I feel like my game's in really good shape. Yeah. So why worry? Go out there and yeah, perform. Yeah. And were you aware of the uh, Northern Ireland shirts and the crowd tonight? Yeah, There's a big following the Green and White Army are here. They come every year and I, I sort of got chatting to like a guy, Craig, that sort of leads the group. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> It's from actually the Northern Ireland Supporters Club here in London. Yeah. So I've said, look, anytime you want to come, just let me know on social media or whatever and I'll sort the tickets. It's, look, it's great looking up especially here in London when you know the crowd's not normally on your side. It's good looking up and seeing those Northern Ireland shirts and hearing Green and White Army. You don't normally hear that at a snicker yeah. match. <laughs> you don't, absolutely. And no World Cup qualification for Northern Ireland, but hopefully yeah. Mark well, Allen we'll goes home with the rest of us. We'll not talk about the referee. No, It'd be nice to bring a big tournament back to Northern Ireland, but there's a long way to go yet, 10 frames yeah. away.
Yeah, and how's your form against Kyron? Because you played him a couple of times this season. He beat me earlier in the year in the semis in uh, China, 6-5. Real good match, just on the wrong end of a decider. But I think we've always had close matches. We haven't played that many times. But look, Kyron showed what a good player he is, and I expect him to perform tomorrow. So hopefully it's a good final for the neutral. Well, you've provided a lot of entertainment tonight. Thank you very much indeed. We've enjoyed it here in the studio as well.